I know trying new things is scary. I know change is hard and no one likes it. We all like our comfort zones. And as far as music, that means we all like listening to the same bands that we fell in love with in high school. Nostalgia is powerful, and as these giant corporations commodify and monetize alternative music for capitalist gain, you need new music. Have you seen those ticket prices? We've known each other for like 30 seconds, and I don't know about you, but I feel a spark. And I can already tell that you're ready to expand your musical horizons and hear some new emo music. So as I go through these 10 modern emo bands, I'll throw some comparisons in there as well to some older bands because like the title of this video uh, suggests, you might be an elder emo who just has been too busy or just hasn't had a chance to check out all of the new music that's happening, so you clicked on this video, so thanks again. So I'll throw in some comparisons in there just so it's easier for you to get a feel of what these bands sound like. Obviously, I'll play some of the songs as well, but it'll just be easier for you to, you know, go and find your new favorite band. And if you're already a hardcore fan of emo music, I've thrown in some bands that aren't the obvious ones that you're expecting to be on this list. And besides, when I'm making these comparisons, uh, you're going to have fun leaving comments telling me I'm wrong anyway. So either way, let's have some fun. Hot Mulligan is the biggest modern emo band. I don't think anybody would disagree. Although they haven't been around since 2015, but they really got popular around that 2018, 2019, 2020 time period. A lot of the conversation around Hot Mulligan is about the lead singer's voice. And I feel like that always reminds me of the same kind of discussion happening with Newfound Glory. I feel like the lead singer of Newfound Glory's voice is like the stereotypical whiny high-pitched pop punk voice like if you were making fun of pop or not even making fun of pop punk but you know if you were trying to just like create the what the casual fan or what the uh stereotypical pop punk vocals would be you'd probably pick newfound glories and that's always been funny to me because newfound glory is obviously one of the most important and influential bands in all of pop punk and hot mulligan uh you know emo pop punk whatever you want to call them or, or label them one of the biggest bands in the scene right now so obviously a lot of people don't have a problem uh, with the lead singer's voice i don't i listen to a lot of different you know aggressive styles of music and i'm not looking for perfect vocals at all and Hot Mulligan has always been interesting to me because obviously they have a lot of uh, newer fans who are uh, maybe younger, just getting into like emo and pop punk and, and rock music in general. But I know a lot of older, elder emos who love Hot Mulligan. Hot Mulligan reminds them uh, they have a lot of nostalgia for stuff, you know, from 2004, 2005, 2006. So it's really interesting to see Hot Mulligan kind of really, you know, uh, across really uh, generations of fans from the early 2000s emo pop punk scene to right now. I sold my childhood way for $30. Harrison Gordon has always reminded me of that meme where it's just always more fun to do stuff on your friend's porch or have like a late night conversation on a porch. I've seen some comparisons to modern baseball, which I can kind of see and hear. I would probably throw maybe some lifetime in there as well for kind of like the more like more of the sound of like the what you're actually hearing like kind of like the grungy kind of like gritty kind of elements of Harrison Gordon songs about wasted potential dropping out of college being broke all the good stuff I've seen some people say stuff online that they don't like that bands in the scene are getting popular because of TikTok or TikTok sounds and stuff like that. And I couldn't disagree more. That makes no sense. There's already no mainstream outlet for rock music, let alone emo, pop, punk, and, and uh, subgenre stuff like that. So, you know, what are we doing here? Just eliminating these uh, options for bands to, you know, promote their music or, or have people hear their music. And again, it's just the, you know, the, uh, the digital age that we live in. So, you know, if bands like Black Flag or uh, Minor Threat were around today, uh, they would be promoting their music on TikTok too. 
And you know what? So would Fugazi. It's easy enough to say I think Like Roses is going to be the next band to blow up in the scene. They are so good. Their song Easy is amazing, catchy, uh, intense. It's going to get stuck in your head. What more could you want? Pretty Things is another one of my favorite songs from Like Roses. And as far as this recording, unless I miss something, I don't think the band is signed anywhere. And that's crazy to me. If... If the scene isn't signing a band like like Roses, then what are we even doing? Ben Quad, a little twinkly Midwest emo, a little screamo. I'm gonna make a comparison that you're not gonna like, but I'm gonna do it anyway, why not? Uh, maybe a little bit Soasin? Soasin? Soasin. I always see posts and stuff online about people trying to find some band that sounds like the translating the name EP or really, you know, just some of more uh, Soasin's earlier stuff. So this is a band you probably should like. What about Ben Quad being a mix of American football and Seosin? Soasin. All jokes aside, if American football ever made an intense song, it would probably sound like Blood for the Blood God. Thank you, New Jersey. Origami Angel mixes pop punk, emo, easycore to make a really distinct sound. I definitely think Origami Angel is one of the faces of the modern emo scene, the fifth wave of emo. And I always like that Origami Angel can, for the most part, put out a lot of songs that sound upbeat, no matter what the topic of the song actually is. I really like the Brightest Day album. I think my favorite song from the band, or, you know, I'll say favorite song right now, is Second Best Friend. Listen, if you name your debut album Greatest Hangs and you put 16 songs on it and it's very good, you got me as a fan. Greatest Hangs is a great pop punk album. I am shocked that the band isn't more popular. I don't believe they're currently either signed, which is crazy. It's pop punk with maybe a little bit more grit, it, just a little bit more aggressive than maybe your um, typical pop punk. What's a good comparison? Ooh, maybe Cartel, but like plus five uh, aggressive intensity uh, and grit. Good Hangs is a band that if they were around when I was in high school, they'd probably be one of my favorite bands. I'm gonna keep saying that Youth Fountains Together in Lonesome is one of the best pop punk albums of all time until it becomes more popular. If you're someone who hasn't listened to pop punk in a long time, if you're an elder emo, I think you're gonna love Youth Fountain. Fast, catchy pop punk with intense lyrics about mental health and trying to be positive. It's weird that Youth Fountain isn't a bigger band in the modern scene. I feel like right now, everybody wants to be an emo band, that's the cool thing to be, in a way that it's really never been before, maybe like in the 2010s scene, your 2015, 2016, something like that. I mean, you could look at the biggest emo band in the world, My Chemical Romance, and they hate being called or being labeled as emo. And it was kind of the same thing with pop punk, because for a long time, you know, bands ran away and the last thing they wanted to be was, you know, a pop punk band and on their new album they were going to mature their sound and, you know, it didn't sound anything like pop punk. And it wasn't really until, you know, the 2010s, the Defend Pop Punk, Man Overboard, all of those bands where they totally embraced being, you know, labeled as pop punk and, and building an entire, you know, how much money did Man Overboard make on the Defend Pop Punk merch? I bring all of that up because I feel like the way that this album sounds together in Lonesome, you know, if it was released in 
2011, Youth Fountain would be one of the biggest bands in the scene. I talked about TikTok earlier, and Rematch is a band I found because of TikTok. It was their song Retrograde. I heard it. I heard the, you know, 30 second sample or whatever. Went to Spotify, found the song, and checked out everything else the band had. As far as comparisons, I've seen a lot of people say State Champs. I can see that. Definitely, I can hear that, I mean. Uh, as far as some of the 2000s bands, Cartel makes sense. Ooh, maybe Hit the Lights. There's a little bit of Easy Core in there, and maybe even Mayday. Emo Gaslight Anthem. What? You want more? You want more than Emo Gaslight Anthem? Liquid Mike, and especially their new album, Paul Bunyan's Slingshot, is what I would call modern rock and roll. I've also seen people throw around the word Americana, something like the Menzingers. That makes sense, too. When your uncle says that rock music is dead and there's no good music anymore, just play them Liquid Mike. Subtle Whispers to Take My Breath Away might be my top song on my Spotify rap this year. I love everything about that song. It's catchy, it's intense, the dual vocals, the screaming. I love everything about it. Metalcore is an obvious way to describe CU Space Cowboy. Bands like Census Fail, A Finch, a Silverstein, a Boys Night Out. If Coup de Grasse was released in like 2005, 2007, I think it would be one of the biggest albums in the scene. And it's a you know, big album right now in the scene in 2024. I've seen a lot of people uh, say that uh, it reminds them of the MySpace era of metalcore in a very positive way. Uh, I love this album. I, I love uh, that uh, song, Subtle Whispers, one of my favorite songs of the year. And I think this album is going to be on a lot of best of 2024 album lists. So that was 10 modern emo bands. Emo, pop punk, punk rock, metalcore, you know, what? it's all the same thing. What are we fighting about subgenres for? If you like this video, I'll have a bunch of links in the description for other videos where I talk about more modern bands in the scene. Please like the video. It really helps me out. Please subscribe if you haven't. And thanks for watching.